They are basically, we know this, polar opposites. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as people, on policy, on just about everything. That is what voters are grappling with in the US, but it's also what the rest of the world is contemplating, particularly in the Middle East, because there is a stark difference on foreign policy, depending if it's a Clinton presidency or a Trump presidency. We asked people in four different Middle East countries where the US is militarily involved what they thought about the two candidates. يعني لها أكثر من دورة انتخابية تترشح وأعتقد أنه كمرأة تستحق فرصة والأرجح أن يعني تكون هيري كلينتون هيري كلينتون بحكم أنها هي مخضرمة سياسية يعني بحكم الخبرة و... و... والأرجح أن هي تكون كلينتون ترامب إجا بمشروع أنه لم يرسل قوات إلى إلى العراق وكذا من هذه الأمور لكي يكسب الشارع الأمريكي وأنا متأكد على أنه الانتخابات سوف تكون لصالح ترامب اللي أتوقع أنا أنه هو ترامب اللي حيفوز بظل الوضع اللي احنا فيه ظل بسبب فوبيا الإسلام وهو طلع بسبب الأحداث اللي حصلت بفرنسا أكثر من دولة يعني وسبب وكان سببها مسلمين حس يعني أنه كان هاد يعني هلأ مثلا اللي مرشحين كلينتون وترامب فعم حس أنه يعني مين ما كان ربيح فهو التأثير على سوريا هو ذاته لأنه نفس يعني نفس السياسة Well, fascinating just listening to those views. With me here in the studio is Maha Yahaha, who's the director of the Carnegie Middle East Center, assistant professor of international relations at Kadir Has University, Akin Unver, is in our Istanbul studio. And we're also joined from Washington by Joshua Mazervi, who's a policy analyst for Africa and the Middle East at the conservative think tank Heritage Foundation. Welcome all of you here to the program. Joshua, let me start with you and, in fact, ask the same question of all three of you. As you sit in the various places around the globe, I mean, how different in terms of direction do you think a Trump presidency compared to a Clinton presidency is likely to be? Well, I'll start this off by caveating my comments that it's difficult to know just because what is said in a campaign doesn't always translate into what actually happens in practice once once a politician takes office. With that said, I, uh, it's, it's difficult to know exactly where Donald Trump stands on some of these issues. He's been fairly vague, uh, particularly around uh, specifics, uh, what he would do in the Middle East. With Hillary Clinton, I think we would see a slightly more muscular policy than we're seeing now. Um, she is a bit more of a hawk than uh, than the current president. But her, her room to, to maneuver is, is fairly limited, just given the realities um, on the ground in the Middle East. I'll pick up on some of those points in a moment. Maha, in terms of direction, how different is it likely to be? Which direction we eventually go in? Fundamentally different. I mean, Donald Trump is more of an isolationist. He's America first. He does not want to engage. He's made it clear and has very little interest. Whereas Hillary is more of a globalist. She's interested in the rest of the world. We're likely to see her t take a far more active interest in what can be done in the region. This, though, I agree with Joshua, this does not mean it's going to translate into a more interventionist policy in the way that some people in the region would like to see. Uh, the view from Istanbul in terms of uh, direction and, and how they view the two candidates. 
I mean, primarily, when you think about a Trump presidency, there's this huge issue of, uh, you know, anti-Islamic rhetoric, and Turkey specifically is extremely sensitive to Islamophobia. Uh, so in that regard, uh, I think Trump presidency is the worst of these alternatives. But what strikes me is that I agree with uh, sort of the previous commentators, uh, that we don't know who advises uh, Trump on foreign policy affairs and what kind of a bureaucracy he's going to bring when he becomes a president. Uh, Joshua, you were talking about uh, how we're still slightly unclear in terms of some of the just the key policies, foreign policies. When you look at Syria, we know Donald Trump has said he has a plan for ISIS, but he hasn't actually articulated what that plan is. I, I mean, would you expect him to be more interventionist when it regards IS than, say, Hillary Clinton? No, I don't think so. Um, I agree with, with one of the previous comments that uh, he does have a more isolationist approach to the world. Uh, he's, he hasn't used that word specifically, perhaps, but if you read his comments closely, if you listen, that is very much the tone. Um, and he's criticized uh, interventionist policies, both Republican and Democrat interventionist policies. So uh, as per his plan for ISIS in Syria, uh, he says that's a secret plan. He doesn't want to reveal the details of that. So I guess we would have to wait and see um, what that would look like if indeed he becomes president. And Maha, if it was Hillary Clinton when it comes to, to Syria, is it a, a continuation of the existing policy? Is it a ramping up of the policy? Where do you think it's likely to go? I think she's more likely to try, try and take a more active role. This will not necessarily translate into a military intervention, as I said before, in the way people would like to see. But what she may try and do, for example, is embrace the, uh, many of the Gulf countries who today feel uh, that they've been isolated, they've been sidelined. To so broaden the coalition. Broaden the coalition and perhaps create a more uh, a coherent approach to arming the rebels, arming the opposition, uh, working with the Syrian opposition uh, moving forward. And, and of course, I tangled up in all of this is Russia. And of course, that is emerging as a greater and greater threat. I mean, it, it, with that particular relationship, the Putin relationship, is that likely to be a very big gulf between the two? Uh, much more accommodating if you're Trump, much more confrontational if you're Clinton? Absolutely. I think if it's the Trump presidency, he's likely to tac I mean, he's expressed his admiration for Putin. He's likely to, ta to tacitly uh, support and uh, obviously support uh, Putin's policies, hand over to him, whereas Hillary will not at, at all. The other thing I think that is important to mention when it comes to the Trump presidency is his populist rhetoric is likely to also embolden uh, dictators like Bashar al-Assad and others. I mean, it's really an extension of a lease of life on people like that. Before I pick up on, on some of those themes, uh, let me just uh, play some of the latest comments when it comes to uh, Russia and that whole relationship with Vladimir Putin. Let's just hear a little of what the two candidates have been saying. I don't know Putin. He said nice things about me. If we got along well, that would be good. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's, clear, you're the puppet. it's pretty clear you won't admit no, that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America, that you encouraged espionage against our people, that you are willing to spout the Putin line. It's interesting, a little snapshot there of the Gulf that we were talking about. Uh, Akin, back in Istanbul, it is interesting when you listen to Donald Trump when he talks of foreign policy because for European countries, for uh, Asian countries, he's said again and again, actually, you can't take for granted just coming under the American umbrella. You're going to have to actually pay your way and make it worthwhile for the US. Does that make people in Turkey nervous? Um, not quite, actually, because, um, I mean, so far, leading from behind strategy of the current administration has led to Turkey uh, already distancing itself from the United States a little bit and actually going into a little bit of uh, Russian orbit, especially after the failed coup attempt of July 15th. Uh, the next administration is actually going to have to win Turkey back in that regard. It's going to be a hard bargain, but... Uh, it's going to be a better bargain both for Turkey and the United States. But so far, uh, Turkey actually, up, up until uh, a move is made from the United States, seems to be within the Russian orbit.
Uh, Joshua, let me bring you back in because uh, it was interesting. Uh, Maha was talking about that whole notion of strength because Donald Trump has made a lot about uh, just the weakness in his view of American foreign policy. I, I mean, are we likely to see a far less nuanced foreign policy if we get Donald Trump uh, as compared to, to Hillary Clinton? Uh, it, it's tough to say because his comments can be very confusing because he does talk about strength a lot. Um, that's uh, one of his major talking points really is that he will bring this strength and this vigor uh, to issues like foreign policy. But then he, as we've discussed earlier in the program, he is also a bit of an isolationist. I don't think he's a true isolationist, but he does very much have this um, idea that the United States has overextended itself, that it has become too engaged in certain conflicts, uh, somewhat similar to the president, actually, um, in, in that regard. So it, it's very difficult to know what this will look like um, if Donald Trump does indeed become president, because his, his rhetoric, uh, uh, seems to be at odds sometimes with uh, the, the few foreign policy goals or uh, the, the sort of world foreign policy worldview that he also espouses. And Maha, just, just a final thought, because, uh, I mean, that whole notion of uh, make America great again, I mean, it has resonance with a section of uh, the audience that Donald Trump is appealing to. But in terms of, if you look at the various crises around the world that America is involved with at the moment. Do you see the capacity to actually make headway on any of those grave questions under either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? I think there is a lot more capacity probably under uh, Hillary Clinton because she has the interest. I mean, she is interested in uh, putting uh, the US making America great again, not only on the national, but also on the global uh, sphere. So I think under Hillary Clinton, yes, there is that capacity to, because the willingness is there. America does have the capacity, but it, you have to have the willingness as well. Uh, under Donald Trump, no, we will see that because the willingness is really, does not exist to that extent, we will not see that uh, that kind of capacity materializing uh, in the battlefield, so to speak, or in any of the crises. Well, fascinating, uh, that analysis. Uh, Maha, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Akeem there in Istanbul and uh, Joshua, thank you so much, all of you, for uh, joining us and giving us that uh, international perspective of this uh, White House race. Well,